Joining us now, the executive vice president of the Trump Organization and, of course, the president's son, Eric Trump. Uh, we know it's a little loud there in the arena where you are, Eric. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Hope you can hear me. Great to be on, John. What are you looking I forward can. to tonight? I can. The place is going absolutely crazy. Well, listen, we had over a million sign-ups for this rally. It's a great way to spend Father's Day. You see the spirit in this room. It's unbelievable. I mean, people in this room, they bleed red, white, and blue. They love my father. They love this nation. They love our country. As you can probably hear right now, they really love our country, and it's great to be in this group again. This really kicks off the campaign season, and um, we're just thrilled to be in Oklahoma. As you know, it's been a controversial kickoff. There are a lot of health uh, experts saying it's too soon to be gathering people together in indoor facilities like this. This is going to be the largest indoor gathering in the country, really, since the whole COVID-19 thing began. How do you answer that? Well, listen, we've taken every precaution, and uh, people in here, I can tell you, feel very safe. They feel very comfortable. They feel very safe. We've done it the right way, but at some point, you have to open back up our country, and people have made their individual choices to come, and people are obviously having a good time. And you know what, John? You need this spirit back in the country. This is what the country wants. This is actually a great example of where the country wants to go. They want this energy. They want the spirit. They want to get out of their house. And... I can tell you, as you can probably hear right now on camera, people want to be here and they're having a great time. Interesting, the contrasts between, you know, the riots and, and protests that have taken place in public um, and some in the media don't seem to, to bat an eye about those crowds. But your campaign, your father's campaign, has taken a lot of heat over this particular uh, rally. Yeah, well, thank you for saying that. It's true. They don't mind if there's a protest with thousands of people walking down Fifth Avenue in New York City. But as soon as you get a great group of people, friendly, you know, I mean, innocent, nice people in here who want to come for a great cause, all of a sudden, because it's my father and it's because it's us and because it's a platform that they don't approve on, you know, they all of a sudden go nuts. But you know what, John, there's a lot more love in this world than there is hate, that much I can tell you. And these people love this country and they love my father. And we're going to win again in 2020. You mark my word. We're going to win, and you see the energy. And um, we're going to win this thing again because there's a lot more love in this country than there is hate. Interesting uh, that you bring that up right now. Uh, I'm talking about the polls. Polls obviously weren't right the last time around. But when you look at the latest polling, uh, they don't look particularly strong for the Trump campaign last month. A little over a month ago, the numbers showed uh, uh, Joe Biden beating your father 48 to 40 percent. This is a Fox News poll. Now the spread has increased a little bit, 50 to 38 percent. Yeah. It's the exact same game they played last time. The polls were wrong last time. They're going to be wrong again. I saw Biden in a room yesterday. He had three people there in these little yellow circles. All of a sudden, we had a million people sign up for this. Who do you think has more enthusiasm? You know, a guy who can't draw two people? You know, he doesn't know where he is or what you see behind me. Listen, the polls are wrong, John. The polls are manipulated. The, the, the polls just aren't accurate. And I don't think anybody would say that Joe Biden has any enthusiasm going into the next few months. He just doesn't. He doesn't have enthusiasm. He doesn't have support. He can't do the rallies. He can't get people to show up for him. He doesn't have what my father has. And people are proud of this country, and they're going to vote for him again. So the, the fact that uh, you have been or your dad has been off the campaign trail for, what, almost four months now, um, this relaunch, are you expecting that this is going to turn around, um, turn around the campaign, turn around the enthusiasm level and, and maybe turn around those numbers that I just put up? I don't think there's anything to turn around. I think we're winning. And I think you can probably tell that we're winning from, again, the noise that you hear behind me. The polls are wrong. You know, they're, they're corrupt, frankly. They over, always oversample Democrats by 11, 12, 13 percent. They're national polls, which mean nothing, absolutely nothing, when you're really talking about 17 states that truly, truly make the difference in an election. Uh, they're wrong. And um, again, you see Biden, he cannot fill up a diner. He can't, he can't draw three people into auditorium. His campaign is keeping him in his basement. He can't get through a sentence without making some horrible gaffe, and it's, uh, it's just very different. And I'm telling you, they're going to be wrong. Uh, the media is going to double down. They always do this. They're clearly on the side of Joe Biden. They're clearly in the pockets of the Democrats. They're going to get it wrong again. They're going to be embarrassed again. And I can't wait for that day to happen. It is clear that there is an awful lot of excitement in that room. And I know a lot of, uh, well, tens of thousands of people who wanted to be in there couldn't be in there tonight.
Eric, uh, Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization, Eric Trump, thanks for spending some time with us tonight.